Hello everyone, I'm Livingston Oden, and this is the Oden Opinion, where we are going to be discussing Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker, the ninth film in the saga, and I gotta say, it's an okay film. It's not the best, it's not the worst, it lies somewhere in the middle, I'm not sure exactly where it ranks just yet, because I just walked out of the movie theater about an hour ago, and so far the movie, it's just it just has a lot to take in. And I gotta say, I have a few issues with it, and I'm going to basically go over a lot of the flaws that I found to be the issues. So with that being said, there are going to be some spoilers. So if you haven't seen the movie yet, go out there, check it out, come back, and then you can listen to me talk about some of the flaws that I thought were flaws. And uh, if you have some issues with what I say, please comment below. We can have a discussion about it. But let's start off with the very beginning. The Emperor is alive and well. He, I wouldn't say too well because he is strapped to a machine and not... Uh, all there. He's almost a ghost of his former self. But they never explain how he comes back. Where did he come from? How did he survive? I wish there was some kind of explanation as to how he got off of the Death Star 2 and survived and you know lived for three decades after what happened in Return of the Jedi. And it's never discussed. It's just, he's back, deal with it, and everyone's kind of surprised by it, and he built a fleet that's been hiding out on some planet you know, far away that nobody knows how to get to, and that kind of jump starts Ray and uh, Finn and Poe's journey into trying to find out where the Emperor is and where this fleet is, so they can take it out and destroy him forever. But I just wish there was some kind of explanation, something, some minute long thing where it's like I crawled my way out of the wreckage and someone found me, and this is how it happened. But that's not how it happened. It's just boom, he's here. And it is what it is. Also, Snoke is a clone. Um, I'm okay with that. I can I can kind of wrap my head around that. That the Emperor was his puppet master. He was the one pulling the strings for Snoke from the very beginning of the Force Awakens. But I, I wish there was just more with Snoke, other than the fact that he was just some clone. I mean, I didn't need some kind of you know, backstory of Snoke or something like that. It, w it just would have been cool if maybe the Emperor had a little more information on Snoke himself. And it sounds like he was kind of hands-off. It sounds like Snoke was just out there. The Emperor trusted him to do what he wanted him to do, which was start the First Order, get everything back and going so the Emperor can come back with his uh, fleet and basically wreak havoc on the galaxy. Um... Also, the Wayfinder. Kylo uses a Wayfinder, which is this uh, piece of artifact that the Emperor had along with in on the Death Star, which is there's two of them, and Kylo finds one of them, and this is how he finds the Emperor. They never discuss what the Wayfinder is, why it exists, how it, it exists. I mean, I, I understand there are artif artifacts in the Star Wars universe because I do watch Rebels, I have watched the Clone Wars, and they discuss those things a lot. But they don't discuss them in the movies, and I kind of wish they went into that a little bit into the films because it's just like, oh, these are artifacts that are used to find the Emperor. Doesn't even say why this information's on the Wayfinder. I would have been uh, if they just had again more description as to why these things exist, and there was none of that in this film. Um, I was also I wasn't thrilled with how Ray and the gang came across the dagger, which is a relic used to find uh, where the Wayfinder is, the second Wayfinder on the Death Star. So I guess the dagger was made by somebody sometime after the uh, Death Star was destroyed because it's found by the way the uh, the wreckage looks, by the way the dagger is formed. that She holds it up, and the way the uh, wreckage is made inside the dagger on its uh, blade is how they find it. It's almost like a, a compass in a way. But the way they come across the dagger, though, it's just a little bit of lazy writing to me because they find the ship. Lando tells them that there's a ship out in the desert. They couldn't find what they were looking for when Luke and Lando went out there to look for this artifact. But they just happen upon it. Uh, they they f go through quicksand, sand, going to a tunnel, and within the tunnel there is this dagger. And it's like, okay, they find the body of the guy that where the ship belonged to, which happened to be the ship that dropped uh, Ray off on Jakku back in before The Force Awakens. So it's just a lot of happenstance where the dagger was on that ship. She was dropped off by that ship. 
And it's like, okay, I guess they just stumbled upon the dagger. No big deal. We got it. Let's keep going until we find our way back to uh, base. But it's just, I, I hate that 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 was the case. I wish there was a little more hunting involved, that there was some kind of Raiders of the Lost Ark kind of moment where they had to go through something in order to get this dagger, but it's just not the case. It was just, oh, here it is. I got it. Found it. Thanks, guys. All right, cool. Let's get going. And, and then they were off. It was no big deal. It was just, again, too happenstantial. Um, General Hux is a spy. I mean... When you go through the first and second one, he was always this kind of sideshow guy to Kylo Ren, more so in the in the uh, the Last Jedi. In Force Awakens, he was kind of just this character that ran the army, and Kylo was the one that almost like a uh, a Tarkin and uh, Vader situation in A New Hope, but it was Hux and and Kylo instead. In the second one, Hux was basically turned into the comic relief, somebody who was kind of bashed on by Kylo and Snoke. And in this one, he was just kind of a throwaway character that was used to move the the story forward and how the uh, Rebels got their information or the Resistance got their information about the Emperor. Other than that, he was just kind of a waste in this movie and he was taken out really quick, and which I kind of liked. I liked that he was taken out and everyone kind of was just kind of sick and tired of hearing his his useless information that he would spout off. So it was kind of sad to see him go the way he did. I wish there was a little more to him, but oh well. You know, let's move on from his character. And uh, something else I had an issue with. Kylo turning to the light side so easily because he hears his mother's voice before he passes away. He gets stabbed in the, in the stomach uh, with a lightsaber uh, by Ray, And it's just, man, he really turned light so quick which is almost the same issue i had with anakin skywalker in revenge of the sith when he turned to the dark side as quick as he did and it's like man i wish there was just more of an arc more drive uh to to why he turned to the light side there there is no explanation there again this movie lacks explanation so I wish there was just something, like at the very beginning, that it was nagging at him that he wanted to turn to the light side, that there was something. Because at the very beginning, he's all about wanting to destroy and find uh, and kill you know, people. It's not. It wasn't about turning... It, it, I mean, with Vader, when you see him in Return of the Jedi, there is at least some kind of hesitation early on in that movie before he turns back to the light side, before... And you understand his motivation as to why he goes to the light side because the Emperor is attacking his son. This one, I, there was none of that. It was just Kylo turns to the light side because his mother passed away, even though he killed his father with no issues. And, you know, I just don't, I just don't buy it. I just didn't buy him turning that quick to the light side. Uh, the end battle. I, it was okay. It wasn't no Return of the Jedi. I still think the Return of the Jedi was the best battle in space that Star Wars has ever had. I think Rogue One comes very close to, to second. Uh, if, if there were some different things in Rogue One, it might have been the number one battle. But I think Return of the Jedi is still the best. This one is okay, but what I can't stand is when everyone is in dire straits, there is no hope left, they are all going to die. I'm talking about the heroes and the evil in the galaxy is about to win, all of a sudden, the, an armada of ships shows up with Lando leading the way, right in the nick of time, right when everyone's about to be destroyed, and I can't stand that. That's why I liked Return of the Jedi, because when Return of the Jedi was going on, there was no uh, ships coming to save anybody. It was This was it. This is the last of our fleet. We're going in, and we're going to kill the Emperor, we're going to shut them down and destroy it and end them for good. Hopefully. They were the underdogs in that fight. The Emperor, the Empire was going to... Uh, it looked like they were going to win. That was the whole, ca the whole case of that movie. The in Re Return of the Jedi, it was the Empire. They were all powerful. There was no way of taking them down. And this small band of rebels happened to do so. This movie didn't have that. It was it was almost that way until that armada showed up of ships upon ships upon ships. 
And it's just, okay, well, there's no way they're going to lose this battle because there's so many of them. And then there was that small part where the Emperor shot his lightning up and basically took down the entire fleet until Rey stepped up and uh, faced off with him. But it's they do that in Rambo. Uh, the, the Rambo Part 4, that's why I liked Rambo 5 a whole lot better because it was just Rambo against a squad of people. And they did that in Rambo... Uh, Three, where, again, here's this armada of people, here's these group of people to help save the day, and it's it's just overused. They shouldn't do that. They should they should have had it to where it like kept the rebellion small, the resistance small, and had it to where they had to fight this empire, and they were the last ditch, ditch effort, and if they lost, this is it. The empire wins, but they didn't have that. So it just kind of killed any drama, any kind of suspense that the movie had at the very end. Um, the draining of the life force the Emperor h- had to do to Rey and Kylo in order to get back his life, uh, to get to gain his powers back, I should say, it's never been discussed in any of the Star Wars films. It's never really been talked about. I mean, they did have it where um, throughout the movie that Rey was healing people and he healed, healed an alien, healed Kylo, but... It never, not in any of the films prior to this, has it ever happened, uh, where you can bring people, like suck out a life force to heal yourself, or give your life force in order to heal somebody else. It, other than maybe the Mandalorian when Baby Yoda does it in episode in uh, chapter seven, but other than that, it's just never discussed, it's never talked about, and it's just kind of like, oh, this is a way of, of for him to get his power back, which I can believe, because he is the Emperor, and he can basically do anything in these films, but, I don't know, I just never, it's never been set up before, and this is the first time I've ever seen it done by a Force user. That's all I'm saying. But, the death of the Emperor, this is kind of like my last flaw in this film. Uh, it mirrors what happens in Sith, where he, he's using Force Lightning to take out Rey, and she has one lightsaber, which is what's used to block his uh, his Force Lightning. And she, you know, like, she uses two lightsabers to block it, and the two lightsabers is enough to, to force her way into his bubble, and it's so close, almost like when Mace Windu was that close and it was deforming him, the Force Lightning. But I guess since she has two lightsabers, that it's able to make him disintegrate into nothing. So, you know, I don't know. I just can't buy that that's how he went out. There's just some things in this film. I loved it. There's a lot of good things in this movie. But these are the flaws that I just thought I couldn't look past. It was just... I I wish there were some things that they did differently. I really think Luke was the one that should have been the one to kill the Emperor. He had the the power to face off with him. I don't think Rey did, even though it was kind of stated that Rey had a thousand generations of Jedi in her, just like Palpatine had a thousand generations of, of uh, Sith in himself. So I guess when you're going by that and that everybody in the Force was talking to her, you know, the Jedi, the old Jedi, you had Yoda's voice, Anakin's voice, Obi-Wan's voice, Luke Skywalker's voice, they were in, and you even had Qui-Gon uh, pop in there, they were all telling her that you have the power to stand up and defeat him, which it was a nice moment, I will give it that, but you want to see somebody who had the power, who has gone through so much, like Luke did, where he was on that island for 30 years, and he was, he's was he gone through so much stuff. It was like an Obi-Wan thing where he was teaching the young kid to uh, take up the mantle and be the Jedi that they needed to be in order to defeat the evil in the, in the galaxy. But still, I, I just I wish it was kind of like Luke standing there instead of uh, Rey. But this is her trilogy, and... You know, the way it ended, it ended fine. I don't know if it ended the way I would want it to, but there was a lot of good things in this movie too. But we're talking about the flaws here, and these are the flaws, and I kind of wish they just didn't brush over some of these things of why the Emperor survived, why Snoke was a clone, um, you know, Ray and the gang coming towards the, the dagger, Hux, and you know, just all of these things. But anyways, with that being said... Still go and check out the film for yourselves. I still enjoyed it. I will probably see it again at some point. 
just like I have with all the Star Wars films. I have seen part one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight multiple times, even though I totally dislike Attack of the Clones and uh, I really dislike The Phantom Menace. There are some good points in those films, but they are still just okay, and I'm still entertained by them, and I can still find the good things in them, just like I found the good things in, in this film. So, with all that being said, what did you guys think of this movie? Do you agree with the flaws that I laid out, or do you disagree with them? Let me know. Comment below. Tell me what you think. Till next time, see you later.